Greetings, this is June 29th, 5.47 p.m., and I hope you are finding relief from the heat. We are in the midst of a heat wave here in British Columbia, and a friend of mine living in the Caribou sent me this image of a fairly ominous sky. Yes, there is another forest fire. It's at Sparks Lake, 15 kilometers north of Highway 1. That's north of Kamloops Lake. So I'm doing this video to remind you of some of the resources that are available online that you can easily access and get updated information and plan how you want to respond to these fire situations. The first place I go to is BC Wildfire Services One Fire page and get updated information on this specific fire as well as any others in the province. And they give a rundown of what's happening, how many crew are on board, uh, suspected causes of the fires. And this is where you're going to get all the evacuation mapping. And you can see here there's an area that they've cordoned off just to the right of center of the screen and that's under evacuation alert. There are 47 firefighters, four helicopters, three heavy equipment, and there's going to be 20 firefighters and two pieces of heavy equipment staying overnight. So check back on this page for updates and to find out if there's a change in the evacuation notices. The next site I go to is FIRMS, Fire Information Resource Management System. And this is run by NASA and it contains data from several satellites, the VIIRS, the MODIS system, as well as satellite photography. So you can see where smoke is occurring. A uh, very valuable site, very interactive. And occasionally they may send you over to firms too in case their server gets too busy. But definitely bookmark this. The, uh, all the links are going to be at the bottom of the page and in the description here on YouTube. The site can also send you alerts. If you sign up and include your email, they will send you updates if there's infrared appearing in the region you've selected. I go to this firm's page in order to get a detailed profile of what's going on at the fire from an infrared perspective. So here we can see these red dots, they're 375 meter indications and they show where there is heat coming from. If we expand the image, we can see there are random hot spots within this fire zone. However, a lot of pattern looks like an infrared controlled signature. We see these sorts of patterns when forestry crews are working to dispose of fuel around a fire area. And you can see on the right hand side of the screen there's a level of layers. You can add different infrared indications. So I've got only the VIIRS 375 meter selected so I don't get duplicate indications making the fire look larger or more concentrated than it actually appears. Also, those indications can be off by as much as a kilometer. So if you see one in a lake or in a built up area, it doesn't necessarily mean the fire is there. It just means that the satellite is picking up information in that region. The next place I go to is windy.com. They collect data from many different weather stations and compile it into a graphic interface so that you can see the wind direction. Also on the right hand side there's multiple layers. You can get precipitation and weather forecasts. Just click anywhere on the screen, click on the little down arrow on the flag and up pops a weather forecast for usually five, six days. And we can see that the temperatures are high, uh, 40 degrees, 39 degrees tomorrow, and the temperature starts cooling a bit. The wind has gusts in the afternoon as the temperature changes at the peak in the afternoon. Those gusts can be 17, 18 kilometers an hour. That's what concerns me the most, not the temperature. And we can see that the wind direction may shift and start to come from the north, uh, potentially 
pushing the fire back in on itself on early Thursday, in the middle of the night, in fact. Uh, other than that, wind direction is meandering, changing a lot. So be aware, and this may also help you to decide where the smoke is going and if you're in the path of that. The next place I go to is the British Columbia Data Center. I want to see where previous burns have been. Where are areas that have already been affected by forest fire? Then I can begin to understand what fuel types are between me and the fire. So here are isolated areas where there have been past forest fires. If you look to the left hand side of the screen, that's where the Elephant Hill fire was. So those burned out areas, even though they're recovering, they may provide less fuel between you and the fire line. We also learned during the Elephant Hill fire that the fire path slows down when it reaches gullies and gulches. However, it speeds up when it reaches plateaus and open flat areas. So the current fire at Sparks Lake is the red dot about the center of the screen. And just to the left of that is Dead Man Vedette Road. And the vegetation looks like it could be fairly dense in that area without previous burns. Be aware of what terrain and vegetation stands between you and the fire line. The next place I go to is Drive BC and here is my favorite cam at Big Bar and it's showing a bit of haze in the background. This cam is pointing north, it's to the west of the smoke path. So go to the Drive BC front page, click to go to the province wide map. Here we can see icons of what's happening in the province on the routes and we can also see cams. So click on any cam and you may be able to get a better visual of what's happening on the ground. We're zooming into the cam at Cache Creek. This is looking north towards the fire and you can see it in the top of the screen that haze and smoke rising above to the north of Cache Creek. If we zoom into the map and look at Sparks Lake, where that smoke is coming from, there's not a lot of access. The routes are limited, so you want to plan ahead of time. And when you hear that there's a fire, know what routes you're going to take to uh, evacuate, uh, what where you have access, and check and see if there's any incidents. For example, here is McClure Ferry. It's temporarily closed, so plan ahead of time. Check out multiple cams as well. Here we're at the Sheridan cam looking west. It looks like a blue sky day, nice travel route. But if we go back to the summit at 15 kilometers west of Little Fort, we can see that band of smoke and haze high above. That smoke may settle down and begin to obscure visibility. So go to Drive BC, plan your route ahead of time, uh, make preparations before you need to travel. Another helpful thing you can do is if you have time and opportunity, send a note to friends that you know in the area. Let them know some of the data that you've collected. You can send them links and just check up on your friends and neighbors and make sure they're okay and they're aware that there is a fire in the area. It has definitely been a while. I'm a little rusty doing this. Uh, I hope that you learned something and you can use this information to be prepared, gather your stuff together and plan your route accordingly. And it's better to know than worry. If you know where the fire is, you know where the wind direction is coming from and what vegetation and terrain is between you and the fire line, then you stand a better chance of making correct decisions without panicking. Personally, the temperatures out there do not bother me as much as the potential for wind gusts. Uh, that's when the fire can move fairly rapidly. The heat may actually help burn out that fuel a lot quicker as long as those winds stay slow meander around and give the firefighters an opportunity to uh, uh, put out some of that fuel in the area 
Um, my thanks goes out to them. I can. It's hard to appreciate what they're going through with those sorts of temperatures. A uh, big thank you to BC Wildfire Service and the firefighters out there. And uh, thanks to you for listening in on this. Keep your nose to the breeze.